What's up guys, Noah from Template FC here, bringing you guys part five of creating football kits for beginners. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about mock-up adjustments. Now, uh, this is probably the most advanced part of the, the series of tutorials. Uh, and we're gonna be covering things like uh, color correction, pen tooling and masking, and warping smart objects. And we're gonna go in that order because it's basically from the simplest to the most complicated. And I would like to say that if you're doing any of these things, be sure to have a copy of the original mockup you have uh, or that you're using somewhere else so you can always revert back to the original. You don't want to make these changes and then not have something to go back to. Of course, you should be able to re-download it from wherever you got it, but still, it's just easier to have a duplicate of your mockup that you're using. Um, I basically create a new file every time I design a new kit. So I have like a bunch of files, so I don't ever have this problem. I can do whatever to the mockup without really worrying. Um, but I know some people have to save space and these files can be kind of big. So be sure to just have a copy when you're modifying this mockup. Now, the first thing we're gonna talk about is color correction, which really isn't the craziest thing. We're not modifying the mockup too much. We can easily delete a color correction. So uh, it's not a big deal, but the other things will affect the mockup um, for future use. Anyways, these tutorials are brought to you by footballshirtculture.com and designfootball.com. So be sure to check them out and let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna be color correcting this jersey a little bit. And now personally, I go for more subtle color corrections most of the time. I don't go for crazy lighting and effects, but the, the, those are options you can do. Uh, but we're just gonna keep it simple. We just wanna show off the design in the best way possible. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we get, get a bit of a better look and we're going to come down here to this half circle thing and this is where all our color correction work is going to come from so all the different color correcting um, items are here and we're going to start off with levels because i think it's the easiest simple color correction to use um, you could use um, curves you could use the brightness and contrast but i think levels is the best and easiest so we have the levels open and you can see there's this graph and there's a real simple way to use it. Basically, you want to look for all these spike points and peaks. And basically, you want to add these or drag these arrows to them. So you notice on the left, there is a peak all the way here. So we don't have to move that one. But over on the right, there's a big gap. So we want to take this right arrow and bring it to that peak. And that'll brighten up everything. And instantly, I really like how this looks as opposed to our original. Um, and even with this left one at a peak, we could bring it in a little bit just to darken it slightly. And let's see how far we can go. I think about there is good. So this is at 15 and 218. And if we close that command zero to zoom out, you can see the difference. That just looks a lot better. Um, the background is more separated now. The, the jersey stands out more, the color pops a little bit more, and overall it just looks a lot nicer. Now, the next thing I like to do is add some sort of photo filter. So if we come down here to photo filter, you'll see there is a bunch of different options. So you could go with the color of your jersey, so maybe we go with a red, um, that's always an option. But uh, basically we do this because the lighting for the mock-up is standard white. So we wanna add some sort of color to it to make it a little more realistic because light typically isn't just pure white. It usually has some, uh, whether it's like a little bit of orange or blue, usually has some sort of color to it. And really the color we'll select here depends on our jersey color. So for white kits, I usually always use the cooling filter because it looks really good with white. Um, but for something like this red one, I might go with a warming filter um, because it's red and the orangish light looks pretty good. Um, so we'll, we'll do something like that and then we'll set the opacity to about 50%. It's one of those things you don't notice until you notice it. Also, you'll notice on this mock-up, we have our little light overlay here um, to brighten up the front. You can always uncheck that to darken it up and I think it might look better without it in this instance. So we're gonna roll without it. Um, and we're gonna add a vibrance next. So let's come down and add that. And basically I always like to increase my vibrance to maybe a 20-ish and that'll just make the color pop a little bit more. Now in this case, it doesn't make too much of a difference, but in most of my designs, it usually helps out, especially like a white kit with some color. I really like that color to pop as much as it can. Um, and you could shoot this up even further if you'd like 
this kit, it's not doing anything too crazy, so we'll leave it at 20. You can also bump up the saturation. Um, our kit is pretty saturated here though, so we don't have to go wild with that. Maybe four, but we really don't need it. Um, also, if you wanna change the color of anything, so a lot of times when you're making like an away kit or something and you're using weird colors, you might not be sure what color to use. So if we use a hue and saturation, you can come to the hue and easily just change it. Um, and you can see we get a bunch of cool looking colors. Um, and for the most part, they all should look pretty decent. Like I think that green looks pretty cool. Um, obviously the logo will get messed up, so you'll have to crop that out um, or mask it out, which we'll kind of cover in a second. Um, but this is an easy way to change the colors of things. If you want to change just certain elements, so if we go back to zero here and where it says master, if we go to yellows, maybe we have yellow elements somewhere that we want to change, we can go and change that. So you'll see that the logo is now changing to blue. So a couple things you can change there pretty easily. And of course you can change the saturation there as well. Now that's basically the color correction I would use for a normal kit. You could go more heavily uh, with certain things like maybe on the levels you want to go for a very contrasted look. You could bring these in and get something that really is really contrasted and kind of wild looking. Maybe we add the light overlay in that instance, but I like, like to keep it subtle for the most part, keep it simple, not go too crazy or too overboard. Now, if you wanna add some light effects like this light overlay that we have, um, you wanna come below the color correction, create a new layer, and we're gonna create some lighting. So if we go to our brush tool, you wanna get a soft brush. So this one here, and I have a brush about 2,800 pixels in size. And we want to start from the top, get some lighting and maybe come down like this. And we could make this lighting like a little more orange or whatever, but we're just going with standard white. Um, let's go ahead and set it to the, the blending option to soft light. And then let's decrease the opacity a little bit. And that's an easy way to add some lighting effects. Now you could also do this with colors. So if we wanted to, we could come in, maybe we get the yellow and do something from the right side, maybe like the left. And we could set that to either screen and maybe 25% or we could do soft light again. And you can see that adds a little bit of that color to our jersey. Usually you'd want to do this as one of the team colors. So in this case, we do the yellow. And I think that looks pretty cool as well. Um, but that's the extent of a color correction. Um, let's go ahead and do the pen tooling next. So for pen tooling, we want to come over to the pen tool here. And let's zoom in. Um, there's a lot of instances where you might want to use this, but I'm going to say we want to create uh, we want to have this stripe going on our collar, but we want it to stop halfway, let's say, and then have the bottom part of the color be black um, or the collar be black. So if we come to our designs folder, we have our collar right and our collar left. So these two are the ones we're going to want to um, trim. And we're going to want the bottom of them to be black. Um, so this might not be the most practical way to use this, although I have done this before. Uh, but there's a lot of ways you, you might want to use the pen tool. So let's say about halfway up, we want to cut this off and we want to cut it off on an angle. We can grab the pen tool, come in here and create like our little cutting effect. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing over on the right side. And since this isn't straight on, we're going to have to eyeball it to get it like symmetrical. Let's do something like that. That's pretty good. Let's come around and close this off. And if you do something like this, where you're going to be um, adjusting the mask of a layer, you usually want to have a duplicate of this file so you can go back to the original or you want to duplicate the layer and do it on a copy. You don't want to do it on the main one. Um, for this case, I have a copy of this file so I, I can adjust this as much as I want. So let's come to the collar right. Actually, we want this one. Right click, 
fill path and be sure actually that you're on the mask. You want to be on the black or white layer here on the right. You don't want to be on this one. This one should be selected. So let's right click fill path and you want to select the color as black and click OK. And then you can see it will delete it. It's basically like erasing. And let's go to the left masking layer and do the same thing. And then we can right click delete path and there you go. We just cropped out that part of the collar and we have a different collar design. So you can do this to any element on the jersey. If we wanted to, we could come down to the front and maybe we wanna cut off the bottom, I don't know. We could come along and kind of follow it like this. And we could cut off the bottom. And I mean, that doesn't look good, but you can do it if you wanted to. Um, and if you make a mistake, just press Command Z a few times, right click, delete path, and you should be good to go. But you can see the pen tool and the masks are really handy for just cutting stuff out. Now you might have to use this um, tool a lot because mockups are set up to be as easy to use as possible, but they're not set up to um, work with all the features you have in your mind. So you're going to have to make adjustments on the fly to get them how you like it. And I'll show you one more thing here uh, like in, that involves masking things. Let's say we want to change the color of the kit overall and everything. Um, so let's make a slight adjustment on the color. What's a realistic color this kit could be? Probably blue. Yeah, let's say we want this to be a second or an away kit now and we want it to be blue, but we want our Manchester United logo back. Um, so you could come in with the pen tool and trace this and copy it and uh, mask it out. But the easiest way to do this is to go to your front design real quick, hide everything but the Man United logo. So let's go ahead and hide all this, save it. come back to your mockup. Now everything's hidden. If you come down to the smart object, you can press command and click the smart object uh, low icon there and it will select that. And then you can come up to the hue and saturation, select the mask, uh, make your background color black. Gosh, okay, there we go. So it's behind the white. And then if you press command delete, that will fill. And you'll notice it will fill that layer mask black so the logo is no longer affected. And then you can come back, select everything again, save it again, come back, and there you go. Um, you would want to do that to the Premier League logo as well, um, so keep that in mind. But yeah, that's just an easy way to do that. And now we have a blue away kit option. Finally, we're going to talk about manipulating the mockup and specifically the smart objects. So you could use the pen tool for the color objects as well, uh, which is something I didn't show, but it basically works the same way. But the smart object layers, um, this is the only place you can use the warping or modifying them. So it, this really depends on what look you're going for, but maybe you find some inconsistencies with the mockup that you want to change. So one thing that I noticed is this sleeve trim here is looking a little wonky to me and I want to fix this to look better in my eyes. So this is right trim, is it two or is it the original? Let's see, it's right trim two. So if I want to adjust this to be a little more even and better, I can come to that. I can click the chain to unchain it, select the um, smart object, press command T, right click and warp. And you can also go to edit, transform, warp, and do it that way. But I like to do it this way. And we can zoom in a bit and modify this to look a little bit better. So I'm gonna, I wanna bring this white down a little bit and then bring this part up. So this might kind of take some playing, playing around. Uh, but basically this is how the smart objects work. So let's bring that over. Mess with this a little bit more. 
And I think that's looking a little bit better already. Let's bring that one up. Bring this down, this up. And we'll say that's good and we can hit enter. And I think that looks much better than what I originally had. Yeah, and that's how you edit the smart objects. Now, the trim, fairly easy, fairly inconsequential, but if you wanna do this to like the main uh, design here, you can. So if we come into the front, select that smart object, Command T, right click, warp. We can do this here too. So uh, depending on your design, you might have to do it for it to look a little more accurate. Um, so you can take these anchor points, extend them out, and do whatever to basically make this fit your design better. Because like I said, it's set up to work for most designs, but not every design is gonna look great. So you might have to use this warp tool to get a better look. Um, and you can like bring down these anchor points, something like that. Um, this is gonna mess with our hue and saturation mask, but, but basically that's how you modify these design layers. And this will just be dependent on your design. In my case, I don't think I really have to modify anything. I just didn't like how that trim was. Do a quick fix and we're good to go. Now, feel free to play around with that as much as you want. But like I said before, be sure to have a copy of the original mock-up. So if you ever wanna go back to the original setup, you can. You don't wanna make changes and then not know what the original looked like and have to go back and re-download it. But when you are modifying these smart objects, be sure to not do anything too crazy because it will distort and blur and pixelate your design if you go too crazy with it. So be sure to keep it fairly simple. Don't go overboard and you should be good. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Be sure to check out the other episodes of this series if you did enjoy. Whenever you finish your designs, by the way, be sure to go to designfootball.com and upload them for the community to see. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.